Okay, this will be part one. I'm going to kind of show you all what goes into building a home. A lot of people watching this are already going to know if you're in construction or if you've already built your own house, then you know. But some people don't know. Maybe you're thinking about building one. So basically, you come out here, the concrete guys come up, they put their forms up, but you can't just throw up a set of forms and pour concrete in it. There's setbacks and there's lot lines and there's easements. There's a drainage survey. There's a the elevation. There's a lot that goes into this. So they come out here and they pull their measurements, put up their batter boards, get their forms built, get their uh, beams and footings dug. So there's, there's a lot that goes into this stuff. You don't just set them up and just go to building. Just if you're out in the country, you can. They leave it open so you can get a tractor in here because as you can see, they, they go ahead and dig their footings. But then the plumber comes in and puts his plumbing in and he covers up most of their footings. And they just come in here and they just dig them back out. A lot of these, I'm old school. The last house we built, I built with my son for him and his wife. And we put 18 inch to two foot footings, two foot deep, inch, a foot and a half to two foot deep. And then below that we put piers going 16 feet deep and then we used rebar and steel not anybody really doing it anymore everybody uses post tension now which i really don't care much for the post tension myself but it is uh, you know designed by an engineer so this is what post tension cable looks like you can see it sitting on the ground they'll unroll that at one point and they'll put this all throughout the slab and the foundation and they'll probably pour 3,000 3,500 psi I like about a 5,000 psi but it's probably overkill but that's what I prefer uh, the last one we did we poured it at 5,000 psi but we were pouring it in the winter time so a lot of people are really concerned with the temperature in the winter time when they pour and at the time you're at the time you're pouring it is important what the outside air temperature is but it's even more important what the temperature is of 24 to 72 hours after you pour because when you pour your concrete you know as long as you're in the upper 30s that concrete's putting off a lot of heat but as it starts to cool off and cure out if it, if it starts dipping below freezing then you're going to have problems because there's so much moisture in it and that moisture freezes and you're going to have a lot of cracking and flaking in your concrete so it needs to be the right day when you pour, but the next three days are also important. So yeah, they, they put footings in these. Uh, let's see if we can get along this form board over here and show you the footing. Well, it's filled in with dirt, but you can see where they dug it down through there. It's probably about 24 inches deep, about a foot wide. Of course, when you figure in cave-ins and everything else, it may be a foot and a half wide at some places. But on this particular slab here, they, the, the foundation guys have come in, set up their forms, and got everything established. And then the plumbers have already come in and, and done their plumbing rough in. So I guess while I'm here, I'll show you some of that. There's the water meter down there. They come out of that with their water line. Run it up under the slab. Where is it? I couldn't find it. There it is comes up under the slab it's running in the ditch with the sewer line come around and what they do is they run it up into here and it comes up right there and they put a hose bib on the end of it so that way whenever the inspector shows up he can check that it's full of water and test it and no leaks on it which there's no water on this one so what they do is they run one line and loop it up right there and then when the house is framed up and they come back they'll run all the rest of the water lines overhead and then all these other pipes are your sewer and drain it's called the dwv system drain waste and vent so down here that white pipe out there is for the city clean out this right here is where they tie onto the city line and if you can see that green pipe down there, a little bitty piece of it, that's the city pipe, and then the plumber ties onto that. 
puts that in there that blocks the pipe so we can put a test on this because it has to be tested and put under pressure to make sure that the joints are good and there's no leaks double clean outs you may see those sticking up through the grass in your yard that's what they look like they have to be going opposite directions so you can go either way to unstop it with a sewer cable Or it's going to be crossing a beam, we sleeve it so that the concrete's not on it. Uh, the concrete won't hurt the pipe. What it does is as the ground shifts and moves, it just basically allows the, uh, the ground around it to move so that the pipe doesn't get snapped in half. You can see a better one right there. Just gives it, gives it a little wiggle room because foundations move and soil moves. And it's just part of it. This right here is a toilet. This pipe right here comes across, turns up, and that's where your toilet's going to sit. That's a vent. Vent has to go all the way through the roof. It's like putting a straw in your coke, and you put your thumb over it, and you pull it out, and the coke stays in the straw. You take your thumb off, and the coke runs out. These vents have to go through the roof so that your, your plumbing will drain correctly. And also so that, that sewer odors and gases that come up through the sewer will have some, a way to escape into the atmosphere. There's another toilet over there. That's going to be a tub and a shower probably in the master bath. That's how they plumb that in. And that's, that's where it starts, right there. If I can find one with the dirt work being done, well... Right over there, you can see there's some pads been built where they're gonna build some more. It's kind of what it looks like. You wanna build a pad, get it flat. But like I said, you wanna make sure you have good drainage. If you don't have enough drainage, you'll see houses in neighborhoods where after it rains, it's sloppy and mushy and holds water and, and um, crawdad holes are everywhere. And it's just, it's just sloppy whenever there's a lot of rain. Then if you have too much drainage, all your dirt just washes off and you can't get grass or anything to take hold. So anyway, maybe I can uh, catch it in this next phase when they come out, get their plastic in and uh, get that post tension, get all their cables in. This is where it starts. Dirt work, plumbing, form boards. Take a look at the house that's in that stage too next time.